Hey everybody! In today's video, I will be doing wet on wet watercolor painting with Altenew's watercolor markers. I'm painting a purple card, a little out of character for me. But I wanted to show you how to use these markers to create custom colors. And when you get them, they do have a little band that needs to be removed before you can use them. This protects them during shipping from having the ink come out of the barrel and get all over the place. <laughs> so that's what that's for. Once you screw the lid back on, then that will allow the ink to flow through the markers. I'm using this gorgeous stamp set that I've already stamped and die cut. And I cut these out of Fabriano cold press watercolor paper. I like to buy the little five by seven blocks. And I'm just doing a wet on wet watercolor technique, but also color mixing. So in this set, which is the tropical set, I did not have exactly the purple that I want, but because it's a watercolor medium, you can just mix. And so I mixed a sort of blue violet and then a warmer violet in little puddles on my palette paper because I wanted some color variation within the flower. I find that going from a cool color to a warm color across the petals of a flower make it look more natural because nothing is truly just one color. And I like the way that these markers blend on wet paper. So you'll see what a smooth blend I get when I go to color the flower centers. Now, if you have the air conditioning on or you're working a little more slowly, just make sure that you keep adding clean water if you want the watercolor to spread out just a bit. So I have the yellow one and you can see how it bleeds into the flower, into the purple. It does not make mud. You know, I love to bust that myth. It's just blending out and making it look like a more natural flower center where the color isn't just in the center, it extends onto those petals. Now here again, I am alternating between cool and warm, and I'm not worried about shading here. This is a fairly quick card, but I do want to make sure that I go back and forth between those two colors. Now the palette paper is a great way to work because you can reactivate the markers on this palette paper even if you do have the air conditioning going and it is drying out a bit just with a water brush you can reactivate those little puddles anytime you want i'm doing the same thing here adding a little bit of yellow in the center making sure that it flows out from the center a bit and you can see how that going back and forth makes those a little bit more appealing to your eye now I should have put a little bit more water in my water brush because you'll see me squeezing it trying to get the last couple of drops of water out. I do like to use a lot of water when I'm doing this technique. And then I'm not squeezing water out when I go to pick up the pigment because that would give me hard edges. It would force the water away. So I keep the tip of the water brush dry when I'm actually picking up the ink. And that's why you're seeing me scribble off on the palette paper just a little bit. These are so fun to color and so easy. You don't have to worry about a ton of details and they sort of do all the work for you. And there I added a little bit more water to the center and that's to encourage that bloom of the yellow into the petals. I just love the way that looks and how the yellow stays bright in the center of those flowers. So same thing, squeeze out a little bit of clean water onto this. I like that each one of these flowers is really different from the other ones in the set. So instead of getting four flowers that look exactly the same, these all look really different and that makes it fun to paint as well. Now any watercolor medium works with this technique. This is just a very basic watercolor technique, but I find that especially when I'm coloring botanicals, letting the pigment that you're working with bloom into the wet paper gives you a more natural and realistic botanical look, whether you're talking about leaves or flowers or anything that you find in nature, because there are no hard lines. 
in botanicals typically. I've been painting a lot of flowers. Lately, I have a very shady yard, so it's hard to grow flowers. But then when I see everybody's flower pictures on Facebook, I get a little jealous <laughs> that I can't ha really have flowers in my yard. I do on some of my little herbs that flower, I get a couple of flowers, but nothing like people with um, climates where the soil temperature gets low at night can grow much better flowers. And also anybody that has full sun, which I do not, our yard is almost completely shaded. But I learned about the soil temperature thing because I was looking at zones for certain plants. And the soil temperature has to get down to 50 degrees or below to produce those really showy flowers that you see in California and places like that. And our soil temperature never gets that low. <laughs> that would be a very rare thing. So some of those plants just won't work here, even if I had all the sun. Now I'm taking the marker directly and dropping the ink onto the leaves there at the end for more intense spots of yellow that you'll be able to see better in the photograph. And here's a little trick for lining up your design and then keeping it in place while you adhere it. Just put some removable tape on the front of it and then you can glue it all down at once. So that's what I like to do. Now one of my pieces of tape got bent back and so it popped that little leaf off, but the rest of it is exactly how I laid it out. You can do this with press and seal as well, but it's a lot of fun to just be able to pick it up and have it be what you wanted. Head over to my blog for a fun giveaway and more information on this card. And thanks so much for watching.